Red alert. All hands to battle stations. Engage. Hey, this is Cheshire from Cheshire Plays Games for me to go and teach you how to play this, which is uh, the new Star Trek Adversaries digital card game. It's really cool. I've been enjoying it probably a little bit too much, to be honest. Alright, so, uh, let's get out of this screen. Shields up. Red alert. <laughs> okay, sure. So we're going to go through how the cards work, how the decks work, all that sort of stuff. We're going to give you a quick overview of the actual game itself, which is surprisingly good for, no offense, but for a Star Trek game. <laughs> Let's get rid of these. So at the start of the game, like most other games, you can mulligan. You don't have a reduced hand size because of that, because you can only mulligan once. So that's fine. As you can see here on these ships, these ships have uh, in the top right hand corner a cost of energy to play so you get one energy per turn just ticks over until it gets to 10. you have attack and defense and then sometimes you have special abilities like guardians such as this one which enemies must attack this ship i think we'll just get rid of the whole hand shuffle it all back it's, it's no good we don't want it now you might want to notice these crew which is a little bit different. So what crew is, uh, is exactly what you might think it is. They go into a ship either in their command slot, which is the blue one, or into your engineering slot, which is the defense slot. Generally speaking, most crew have some sort of special ability. So as you can see here with Catherine Pulaski, if you remember her, she was the ship's captain in TNG for a while, captain, doctor in TNG for a while. <laughs> Uh, when you retreat, which we'll get to in a second, she restores 4 hit points to all friendly ships. What we can do here? Uh, okay, this ship isn't going to last much longer. Uh, so I think what we, what we might do is retreat. Now, it means we lose the ship. But, as you can see here, we just gain the energy cost from that ship. That's called retreating. You can only do it if your ship can attack, so if it has haste or if it's been in play for a whole turn and it doesn't have summoning sickness, uh, then it can retreat and we'll get the, the additional back from that, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, Alright, so we're going to chuck Vina in the engineering slot of our Andorian Recon Cruiser and now it's a 3 6. Then we end the turn. You can see here auxiliary power is going up. Uh, auxiliary power you get at 5 points at the end of your turn plus any unspent energy plus if you're dealt damage you usually get auxiliary power from that as well once you have 20 you can use the special and once you have 40 you can use the ultimate now each one of these ships as you can see here has a special attached to it with a special core deck of 6 cards so the 6 cards can't be changed they're set in your actual ship itself you can change your deck but not the core deck because the core deck is particular to that specific ship. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? I guess... Retreat, do one damage to all enemy ships. Uh, that sounds actually pretty cool. But we're going to take on our opponent's stolen Nebula class and kill it. Call it, Master Hut, call it! Uh, this one retreats, we could draw a card. And we'll be done. So the way to win is when you reduce your opponent's life points or hit points down to zero, uh, usually from 30. The same that you'll lose if you run down to zero as well, so that's something to be careful of. We're going to get to use our special in a second. Do we want to though? That is the question. Uh, so first I think we might retreat this just to draw a card. Now as you'll see when we retreat it we actually get the energy cost back. So it allows us to uh, effectively ramp. If you know other card games that have that terminology. Uh, let's use our special. Okay, so we can give hay ships plus one attack. That's fine. It's not great. That's pretty cool though. 
Uh, so we've got an event here. So there's three different types of uh, of cards. There's ships, there's crew, and then there's events. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so we'll go with the one that can remove Guardian just because it's haste. We can use it to blow up the ship. Boom. Uh, we can then... I think we'll just attack our opponent. Ooh, we've got crew that we can play. Okay, well let's power up maybe this ship. And then uh, this ship. Now remember what we are talking about, retreat. So because Polanski has retreat, restore 4 hit points, we can do that now. We'll get the energy cost back, heal both of our ships, and then put out our Guardian with modulating shields. Now, there's keywords. As you can see, Guardian means that all ships have to attack it. Modulating shields means that the first time it takes damage from any source, that damage is negated. Now this especially means that if you've got uh, an overkill vessel, an overkill is like trample or you know, it, it deals its damage to a ship and any excess damage goes over to our opponent's lead ship, their flagship. But if you've got modulating shields, it will soak all of that damage, which is unexpected. So if you're a magic player, it doesn't work like trample. Bear that in mind. Grabanelog. I don't even know who Grabanelog is. I'm guessing maybe from the original series. I was never a fan of the original series, I'm gonna tell you. So you can see here that this has Core Breach. So Core Breach is when a ship is destroyed, it has an effect. Uh, this particular one says Summon a 1-1 Shuttlecraft. We're not too worried about that, but we are worried about this ship dying because it only has one health left. Um, but that's fine anyway. Let's go with a big hasty here and just win the game. So haste means it can attack straight away, as you might expect from most card games. And... Boom! Victory! Gumbo! <laughs> uh, so because we completed that, it's given us a legendary replicator pat pattern. Now, if you know what a replicator is, because you watch Star Trek, as it's about to tell us, it means you can use it to craft a specific subset of items. So each deck must contain 30 cards, each basic or common ship may only be used two times in the deck. All other cards are unique. Uh, each deck may contain up to six legendary cards. Now here's the interesting part, you can't just fill your deck with legendaries. I would love to, I think that would be awesome. But it's balanced out so that you can't buck the system. Mostly. Because <laughs> there is a special Ferengi that allows you to buck the system. Just just a little, just a tiny bit. Maximum power to the shields. So, click the replica replicator button to view all cards of the game. Right click, tap hold. Hold on mobile. Or just right click and then tap on it. To replicate or scrap a card. Excuse me. I want my boogie! I'm not a soldier anymore. I'm an engineer. Terrorists don't get to be heroes. True, they don't. Uh, where was it? We're looking for... Nope. Just crew. Eat any good books lately? Eat any good books lately? I had to keep listening to that Eat one. Eat any good books lately? Eat any good books lately? Eat any good books lately? I don't remember which TNG episode that was from. Uh, let's find the Ferengi that we were talking about. Good customer. There he is. Quark. There is a lot of discussion around Quark and whether he should be your first legendary. The reason being is because when you deploy him, you get to add two random legendary cards to your hand, which is quite powerful. Especially when you consider that you can only have three legendary ships and three legendary crew in your deck. And you can have Quark, which kind of breaks that a little bit, although it's random. But, 5 for a zero one, 
not not amazing. The effect of being able to get those random legendaries, pretty good. Especially the legendaries are generally pretty our best strong. Defense is knowledge. And our best defense is knowledge. Alright, let's get out of this. So when you first go through and you complete the uh, the starter mission, you'll get some booster packs. As you can see here, we've got three booster packs. You get one Federation, one Klingon, one Standard. So let's start with the Federation. Common. So your rarities are common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary. There's five different rarities in the game. Common. Common. Rare. Pretty cool, right? Common. Not really. Right. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is currently there's two federa uh, two different factions. So there's Federation and Klingon, with Rem Romulan coming, I believe, later this month in August. Uh, the other thing that you will notice is there is obviously a very big difference between a common and a legendary, and there's always going to be because. That's how rarities affect card games, if you haven't played a card common. game before. Common. Common. Rare. Barely we got two of those. Ripped off. <laughs> common. 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 Combo! Catherine Genuinely, awesome. So three cost one one. So that's the other thing to remember is that Attack and defense on a crew member adds that to the ship. So if you put this in a 1-1 one, one ship, it becomes a 2-2 two, two ship. Uh, retreat reduces the cost of all cards in your hand by 2. That's pretty cool. So, what else do you get when you actually go and create your free account? Well, as we just said, you get one of each of the booster packs. But, as you can see down here, you've got 115... 115? 1,500 Latinum and 325 command points. And you're probably wondering what they can be used on. Your Latinum, you can buy your booster packs. With your command points, you can buy massive amounts of booster packs if you really want to go that way. This is how you can purchase your command points, which is interesting. I haven't looked at the purchase values versus boosters or anything like that. I don't want to even get into that because if you're somebody who's going to spend money on the game, go nuts by all means. Um, if you're anything like me, you'll probably just play the game for fun. Maybe go into some of the other modes, which we'll get to in just a second. As you can see here, there's a whole bunch of grayed out ships. These are ships that you can unlock either with, as you can see here, the command points or with Latinum. Now, Latinum is earned by a couple of different ways. Latinum you can get from daily slash uh, weekly quests. As you can see here, you can also get booster packs. The other way is that there's different ways to play the game. And we will get into that in just a second. Hey, look at that. You can actually... That's pretty cool. It's correctly shaded, so it renders correctly. Nice. That's a touch they didn't have to put in the game, but decided to. Sorry, I'll stop that. <laughs> so, I don't know what Galaxy is going to be. I'm not sure. Casual multiplayer? Multiplayer. They're going to have a casual multiplayer. This makes me extremely happy. That's like Commander, but for Star Trek? Count me in. Uh, so you've got single player practice where you can practice with your decks, which is pretty cool. And you have Quark's Draft, which we'll get into in a second, and Ranked Multiplayer. Play. Okay, so Ranked Multiplayer. First up, I don't have a rank yet. Because we haven't played, obviously. But as you can see here, there is weekly, weekly rewards depending on how, how far into the game you're going to be getting. That's... Uh, people are spending a lot of time playing this game. And... All the power to them. Go nuts. You got 44 minutes, huh? Let's let's play a game. I don't know how many people are gonna be playing with 44 to 44 minutes to go 
on uh, on the PvP side of things. But so currently you've got a single player mode where you can test your decks. You've got Quark's Draft, which is sort of similar to Hearthstone Draft, uh, and you have a multiplayer uh, single dual player PvP. Multiplayer. Doesn't look like we're going to get to do any PvP, which is fine. Uh, I've actually been playing it all morning anyway. Let's go and try Quark's Draft. Alright, enter Quarks and play to win. Collect as many Ferengi tokens as you can, uh, but three losses and you're out. So here's the thing, Ferengi tokens uh, are used particularly inside Quark's Draft to buy Latinum. Uh, to buy rare crafting cards and to buy booster packs. That's it. Once you're in a Quark's Draft, uh, you can play anytime, but as soon as you hit three losses, you're out, and it's not that you have to keep playing and playing and playing and playing and playing. As you can see, that didn't cost me anything to actually enter the draft, which is interesting because I'm sure in the future they will look to maybe charge Latinum or something. Uh, so we've got three ships that we can choose from. We've got uh, an Epic. We have a rare. Ooh, bird of prey. Wanna take jamming. Restealth all friendly ships of cloaking. Gain two attack. It's pretty cool. Uh and we've got an uncommon. Random tactical shuttle. I I think we'll go with this one. We'll go with Federation. So you get a legendary card to start off with on your first pick to help you try and kind of ease into what your deck's going to be. And then I think it was on the... It was two. There was one on the first, and one on, I think, the 15th or something, or maybe the 7th. It was something weird. It was a weird way to do it, but it, it was fine. Uh, so, trigger all retreat effects on target friendly ship. That's, no, that's not fun. We don't want to play the retreat deck, do we? I mean, we're playing this one here, which is uh, all about shields and guardians and stuff. Um, it's cool because it summons random shuttle or a heavy escort. I think we're going to go with guardian modulating shields. Uh, USS Enterprise, considering that we've named our account LaForge, or at least this account. I wanted to make one just so that I had one for this particular tutorial. Um... Okay, so we got Overkill, which deals extra damage. We've got gives adjacent ships Guardian, which actually can be really good. Uh, the other thing to remember is you'll actually be playing here against the AI and not actually against human players, which is a bit of a weird decision, but I understand. But I think it's a bit of a weird decision, personally. <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, let's go with the Overkill ship, because over Overkill is really good. Um, when building a deck, you generally want about, even in draft, you want about uh, eight crew members and the rest of them as ships. Sometimes it obviously doesn't give you that ability, which is fine, uh, but it's something to definitely bear in mind. <laughs> What's up with those eyes? I don't get it, Apollo. What is going on with that art? Uh, deploy, summon a Frankie shuttle. Let's do that. Uh, we have a haste ship. Uh, he'll target Guardian for three, which sounds like actually might be not bad. Uh, but I think we want to deploy give a friendly ship plus one plus one. Uh, oh, jamming. Yeah, so takes no attack when it, no damage when attacking. Uh, if you have a jamming ship and it attacks another ship, it will deal its damage but won't get damage back. So that's pretty cool. Let's grab that. So here we have a cloaker, so it means it comes into play stealthed, so your opponent can't actually target it. Um, when it attacks, it loses stealth. It, it breaks stealth, basically. Uh, it hits your opponent, and then on the next turn, if you decide not to actually do anything with that ship, and you just end your turn, it'll re-cloak. So it'll re-engage its cloaking shields, which is pretty cool. Uh, Guardian deploy, give friendly ship plus one plus one, that's for us. Uh, haste 3-2 for 3, that sounds good. 
We've got Terra, deal one damage to target. So that's any target, including your opponent's flagship. Uh, deploy draw a card. Deploy draw a card. I think we'll take the four for three for deploy and draw a card because that's that's fine. It's good. Ah, here's an interesting thing. So modulating shields. We we were talking about this before. Was it, it absorbs all incoming damage to the ship the first time it's attacked? Uh, we do have a retreat shuttle here. So we could retreat this and then get a random three cost ship card to our hand, uh, which might even be our haste. I think we'll take that just to try it out because I've not actually tried that before. Ah, right, 10. So this is going to be an interesting one. So we've got Julian Bashir. Uh, restore five hit points to your flagship or deal f uh, blah, on an on retreat, deal five damage to the enemy flagship. Now remember that when you retreat, you get to keep the staff in your deck, so they get shuffled in, um, but you lose the ship itself. Uh, take control of the target ship with three or less, because, you know, Khan! Kind of wish it was new Khan. Uh, and we have a bulk tactical cube, which is very interesting, because it gives you one, two bulk probe guardians uh, at the end of turn. I think that we'll take the bulk cube here. Feels gross playing with the Borg, but okay. Um, haste, Commander Game Jamming. That's a really good ship. Uh, a ship that uh, deploys and then deals 4 damage to target enemy ship with haste is a little bit too narrow in my opinion. Uh, this is Neelix. Neelix. Flox is also very good. Um, Flox, of course, from Enterprise, from memory. Dr. Flox. Yes, you should check me out on Twitter. Uh, hmm. The hay ship is six. I think we'll take the flux here. Because it can be used in a pinch to just really save your ass. So we've got Malcolm Reed. Uh, who gives you two auxiliary when a friendly ship is destroyed. We do have another haster, which is really cool. Or the overkill. Now, we do already have one of these overkills. I like taking hay ships because they can deal with threats straight up. Um, not these ones though, because that's that's a little bit too expensive for my liking. Um, but we've got a 9-5 or a 5-2. I think we'll just take the 5-2 here. Ah, here's a good one. The Gorn. Everyone's favourite horrible masked villain. Because obviously the, the dude wearing the Gorn outfit looks terrible. Don't worry, it's a whole big joke about the original series and another reason why I hate the original series. Uh, so deploy, deal 2 damage to target enemy ship is really good. There's a couple of ships that do that as well. that deal 1 or 2 damage and they're pretty good. Uh, we're going to take another Guardian here. Ooh, epics. So as you can see with this purple outline, it means it's an epic. So retreat, reduce the cost of all cards in your hand by one. <sighs> Guardian modulating shields, it's not bad. Draw until you have the same amount of cards in your hand as your opponent. It's fine, but there's no way to make your opponent draw cards. So here is between the Lexington uh, and the Kazon Heavy Carrier. I think we'll take the Kazon. Hello Kazon. Give target friendly ship guardian. Eh. Give a target friendly ship plus two attack until the end of turn. It's only until the end of turn. It's not that great. Um, this is like a one shot effect that just doesn't do much. I think we will gain the auxiliary power. That sounds like a really great idea. Give adjacent ships plus one plus one and guardian. Ooh, that's that's pretty good. How many in the four slot? Not many. Four in the four slot. All right, let's take another haster. We've got Cloaking Device, restore four hit points to your flagship, uh, or deal one damage to two random enemy ships, which I think is actually a lot a lot better than, than you might expect. All right, so here at 20, we get another legendary card. Oh, 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 oh you're pretty good. Um, okay, so here's one of the things that I, that personally I'm not a big fan of with this game.
Corbridge, summon stolen USS Stargazer NCC-2893. Cool, what does that do? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a Stargazer. I don't know what the Stargazer does. Uh, when, a sh when any ship is destroyed, draw a card. Card advantage is pretty good, but deploy grants jamming to all friendly ships. Snap take. Uh, start of your turn, restore three hit points to your flagship. Frangi. Yeah, I think that that's one we're going with. Uh, if I played on a ship of the Guardian game, plus O plus two. Well, we are playing some good Guardian stuff, so let's do that. We have Federation Defense Fighter. Corbridge gained three auxiliary power. Eh, that's that's not great. That's not. Carol Marcus and Robin Leafier are both actually pretty good. We're going to take Leafier here to draw extra cards because card draw is still very important like anything else. Um, we can restore some hit points to our flagship. This is actually really good because not only does it give you a plus two, but it also gives you an extra plus two if attacking the flagship. Um, or we can take the back seal. Uh, at the start of your turn, deal one damage to a random enemy ship. I think here we're going to take Andra, uh, Ardra. And Ardra. Uh, again, jamming really good. The Keeper here is an interesting one because it doesn't add any stats to your ship, but it just gives you jamming. Which is still good enough to take. I hope we will. Speaking of good enough to take, uh, so we've got a couple of things here. We talked about Ardra. Um... Travis Mayweather here is pretty good. Adds 1-1 one, one for 2. But when it deploys, he deals 2 damage to target enemy ship, which is pretty fantastic. We also have this great 5 drop because it's Guardian. When the ship takes damage, restore 2 hit points to your flagship. Now, usually I would take this, but we're playing enough Guardian stuff, I think that we can maybe take Travis because Travis is slightly better. Um... When this ship takes damage, draw a card. Yeah, let's just take that. Where are we? We've got two left. Got in a modulating shields. Again, it's a tiny little ship, but it's a good speed bump. So we'll take it. Uh, okay. Neutralize. That's something we haven't actually talked about because you don't see it very often. All uh, effects buffs on the ship are negated. So it'll basically just turn off um, any buffs that are on that ship. So if that ship's got like plus two to attack, not anymore. Scrubs are clean. Uh, however, I'm going to take another Guardian here because it has modulating shields. Right, so your very first draft, you'll start with two of the Ferengi chips. And as you can see here, you can use them to purchase Latinum. You can use them to purchase uh, rare replicator patterns or standard boost packs. So let's go, we'll, we'll see what, what comes of it. Again, I've been playing this for like the last, what, three days? Uh, three or four days? Really, really digging it. So like, as with any other card game here, we can, you know, go ahead and replace cards in our hand, like as our first mulligan. Now because, of course, it's the chess thing, uh, because we're not going first, we get a catch-up card, which we don't really need to use yet. Uh, this one is particularly interesting because it gains you plus one energy for the turn and also gives you an extra five auxiliary, which is extremely important to have auxiliary power. Uh, one, three, huh? Yep. We're going to play our haste ship and smash apart our opponent's little, what was it? Galleon shuttlecraft. Yeah, you didn't need that shuttle craft anyway, buddy. Don't worry about it. We could flocks here, but obviously we don't need to. Um, we could also retreat this and go to six, which is actually a pretty good idea. Uh, it means that we can play this big guardian here. We don't want to deploy this one because we don't have a friendly ship. Um, or we could deploy our full four with overkill, which actually seems like a pretty good idea. Now, here's the thing. You can see currently we're on 16 auxiliary. If we hit our end turn, we gain our plus 5, plus 2, which is 7, so 23. Important. Really important.
Okay. This, obviously this isn't a Guardian, so we're not getting the plus two buff, but there's a reason why I'm doing this. Overkill, as I said before, is like trample, so the extra damage is going to transfer over. At this point, it's only going to be one point of damage, but one point of damage is fine. It's fine. I think the other thing here is we can use our Hooray if we want, uh, which would certainly save this just in case our opponent shoots it for one. Um, two damage to the enemy flagship, self-replicating mine, okay. So remember that you should always check what your opponent's ship is, I guess probably before we should have even started making plays we should have checked what our opponent's ship is, uh, but that's it's not a big deal to be honest. Uh, okay, so what are we going to do here? I think we won't special. I don't think we really need to just yet. Get good, scrub. Thanks, Galaga. Get good yourself, you scrub. Wait a second. Hang on. Get off my bridge! <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I suppose this means I can look forward to a week of continual harassment on this subject. <laughs> Have you tried this yet, Galaga? Like I keep telling you to. Cough. Uh, what are we going to play now? Uh, Guardian, give plus one, plus one. That sounds pretty good. And then we'll just attack our opponent for six. Hope you're ready for some PUBG in a sec. So as you can see from the draft mode, um, AI is not terrible. In some respects, the AI sometimes shoots itself with card effects, which is just the programming not being 100% up to scratch, to be honest. Uh, but generally speaking, it's, it's actually pretty good. So we're going to use our ultimate here. So we get this Galaxy Class Heavy Escort, which is a 3-5. At the end of our turn, we get to deal 5 damage to the enemy flagship, which is... Nice. It's a bit nice. Swoop. No, not yet. Gotta get my daughter to sleep before PUBG. That's fair enough. Oof. Shut up, Wesley. Uh, so Wesley Crusher reduce target enemy ship attack to one. So this is our ship that was a three four with modulating shields, and our opponent just shut it down. Starbuck and Gillard. Life forms. You tiny little life forms. You precious little <laughs> life forms. You're welcome. Where are you? So as you can see here, because we used our ultimate, we've got a whole bunch of new stuff that we can play. Uh, the first thing we might do is this one. No. Give plus three, plus three modulating shields to a friendly ship. Zwing! Yeah, we will. Uh, restore some hit points to our flagship. This is now a 610. Our opponent's going to have a very hard time dealing with it. Especially considering it has this modulating shield on it. First thing we're going to do, though, is kill this. Because we don't want our opponent gaining that extra uh, core auxiliary power. Core auxiliary power, uh, again, powers up these specials and ultimates. So if we can keep our opponent off those for now, then that's great. I mean, we're doing pretty well at the moment. We're at 28, our opponent's at 22. We should be able to win this match. Question is, do I play my ball tactical cube? Mm, cubiness. Self-replicating mine. Another self-replicating mine. Ooh, okay, so we've got a Travis. Uh, which I don't, actually, I kind of don't think we want to use just yet. Um, someone to ra random tactical shuttle, that's pretty cool. Let's go with the ball cube, though. We are the Borg. Very much the Borg. 
just basically going to overwhelm our opponent now with like big stuff if we can. So as you can see here, the Borg Shuttle gives you uh, legendary little 1-2 Guardians. So, pretty good. Red alert! All hands to battle stations! <laughs> Engage! Okay, so, uh, we want to stem a little bit of the damage. We can actually just win here on the spot if we attack, which is fine. Uh, I just wanted to show you here with, uh, Travis. Because we can just shoot a ship and kill it. Uh, we can modulating shields, but more importantly... Pew, pew. Pew, pew. We can just kill our opponent. Hey, good for us. So as you can see here, we got one extra chip from Winning, which is nice. And yeah, so that is a learn to play. That is stretching out through the cards themselves, uh, the fun of drafting, some of the choices I made in that draft. So I hope you really enjoyed that. I enjoyed playing this game. As I keep saying, this game to me is really good it's surprisingly good this is actually taken over from like uh hearthstone and yukio and lots of other random stuff i play on mobile i actually play this on the pc and on my mobile it's available both through itunes through uh the the apple store um whatever you call it i don't have an apple i run an android the google play store uh, and also on steam <laughs> who would have guessed uh so you can get this game on all of your platforms if you really want to uh, and Again, I've been having so much fun with it, so I hope you do too. And that's not just because I'm a Star Trek guy, but obviously because I'm a Star Trek guy, I probably enjoy it more than maybe uh, an ordinary run of the mill person might enjoy it. But uh, this has enough tactical decisions and enough deep gameplay that it's going to keep you coming back for quite a while, especially with the new Romulans coming out as well. That's going to expand it out to another faction, so it'll be three factions. Um, I hope that they do this multiplayer thing. I want to read more about it. So I might head on over to their website and check it out. Play PUBG so I can judge you. Ha ha ha. Yeah, no, we're not playing PUBG on stream today. It was just an intro to Star Trek. Anyway, thank you for hanging out. I'm Cheshire from Cheshire Place Games. You can catch me here on twitch.tv forward slash Cheshire Place Games. You can catch me over on youtube.com forward slash Cheshire Place Games. Like, comment, subscribe, I guess. Uh, and remember to keep Cracker Packs, not for draft, not for value, but for draft, which I guess doesn't really apply to this. So I think I have something for you. Goodbye, Jean-Luc. I'm going to miss you. You had such potential. But then again, all good things must come to an end. Auto-destruct sequence armed.